Hello everyone. Welcome to another video on knowledge sharing session from iTrack Solutions. In this video, we are going to continue with a series of seven QC tools in addition to the previous videos that we have posted. In this video, we will understand about a very, very famous and frequently used seven QC tools called cause and effect diagram. Cause and effect diagram is also called as fishbone diagram because the image looks like a skeleton of a fish. It's also called as Ishikawa diagram because this diagram is introduced by Karo Ishikawa, a very famous Japanese quality expert. And the purpose of this diagram is to give you a graphical representation of what is your problem and what are the causes to the problem. So the effect or in other ways, the problem will be written at the head of the fish. So this section is called the head of the fish. And the reasons for this problem will be identified through an uh, exercise called brainstorming session. And once it get identified through an exercise called brainstorming session, then we will categorize those reasons into six M's. Generally, these six M's are man, mother nature, measurements, machine, method, and material. So this is how you... Uh, draw a fishbone diagram. So let's see how this fishbone diagram can be drawn in our subsequent slides. For any problem to get solved, we need to approach or for any root cause analysis, we need to approach the root cause analysis into three stages. One, generate list of causes, list of possible causes. What would be the possible reasons for a particular problem to happen? So how that list of possible causes can be generated? through an exercise called brainstorming. And once you do this exercise, you will be able to come up with a list of uh, reasons which are called causes for a problem. And then you will cluster those causes under common headers. So how do you cluster? You again follow a technique called affinity diagram. So affinity diagram is you may have 30, 40, 50 causes for a particular problem, but you will be able to club those 50 causes under common five, six headers. So as I told in the beginning of this video, the general approach that Karo Ishikawa has defined or given to us is you can club them under six M's, right? Man, mother nature, material, measurement, method, and uh, mission. So these could be the six common headers in which you can club them. But it's not a hard and fast rule that you should al always follow the six M. Sometimes you can also change these headers, but generally this is what Ishikawa has suggested. So as you do this cl affinity clustering, then you will be able to draw the fishbone diagram. This is the sequence of steps, brainstorming, affinity clustering, and then fishbone diagram. So what is brainstorming? Many of you who are listening to this video would have participated in brainstorming exercises previously, or you would have conducted brainstorming exercises or heard about brainstorming exercise. So brainstorming is an exercise where we will collect stakeholders, people who are related to the problem that we are discussing. So they can be from different departments in the organization, but in some way or other, they are connected to the problem that we are discussing. So these stakeholders will be gathered and they will be uh, assembled in a location which is conducive for uh, creative thinking, a location which is best for people to express their opinion. In such an environment, you will list down your or you will write down your problem, which is the head of your fish. And then you will ask people to tell what would be the cause or the reason for this problem to happen. And it's very important that we don't do this brainstorming session like a debate or like a you know a free flow discussion it should be done in a very constructive way so always when you do brainstorming there is do's and don'ts for brainstorming so you cannot uh, validate an idea during a brainstorming session or you cannot paraphrase what your participant is saying so you cannot find fault with the communication or the logic of that reason any Thing that comes in a brainstorming session need to be documented as it is. Even if you find it is illogical, you document. You don't challenge the person who is giving that particular reason or root cause. So that becomes a very, very important step. So you have to do the brainstorming in the right way so that you would generate maybe 100, 
70, 80 reasons. Some of them will be illogical, can be knocked off later. There can be duplication, same point represented by two or three people in different, different ways. Again, they can be knocked off later. But at the time of brainstorming, that 20, 25 minute focused brainstorming session, at that stage, don't try to uh, validate or don't try to evaluate any idea, just or any root cause that the participant is giving. Just we need to document it. And once the brainstorming is done, the next step is to convert or segregate those ideas which came out of brainstorming or those root causes which came out of brainstorming into affinity clustering. So what we call it as an affinity diagram or affinity clustering is grouping root causes under common headers, group, grouping root causes under similar headers. And once we are able to do this affinity clustering, then we will be able to take those affinity clustering and convert it into a fishbone diagram like this. As I told in the beginning of this video, the head of the fish will represent the problem that we are trying to solve and the main bones. So what I call it as main bone is this dark blue line. So this is method, machine, material, environment, otherwise called mother nature, measurement, people. So these are the main bones and underneath each of this, we will be able to uh, club those root causes which fall under this category. Just to give you a very simple example, let us take this paper board. We all would have made paper boards during our uh, you know, uh, childhood days. Uh, so when you make a paper board and try to float it in water, the problem statement is a paper boat are not floating long enough. So kids are making paper boats. So you assemble, let's say, 20, 30 kids in a room, ask them to make paper boats. When you ask them to make paper boat, what will happen if you don't control the material? What size, what GSM, what thickness of paper that they are going to use? If you don't control that, you will have variation due to material. If you don't give them a standard operating procedure of how these papers need to be folded so that you get a perfectly shaped paper board, again, if you don't control that, there will be variation due to method. Measurement. How big should be your paper? Is it an A4 size paper, A5 size paper, A4 further cut into a half of it? If you don't define the dimension of your input raw material, which is paper in this case, that could also lead to variation. Machine, the kind of tools, scissors, scales, or any kind of tool that you're going to provide to the kids to make this paper, paper board, if that is not standardized, few kids using scale to fold the paper, few kids folding it in their plain hand, few kids using scissors to cut it, few kids using knife to cut it, few kids don't have any of these tools, so they have to use, cut it just by their hand, all this variation in the mission could lead to variation in your final product. Skill level of people. So whether these kids are trying to make paper boards, some of them are experts in making it, some of them are uh, just doing it for the first time. This variation in the skill level of man could also lead to the variation in your final product. Finally, when this paper board go to the, um, what I should say, the place where this paper boat is going to be floated in water, the wind speed, the flow, the rate at which the water flows. So all these are environmental factors, right, which we call it as mother nature. And that can also have a role in your uh, paper boats not floating long enough. So when you do brainstorming, you don't have to make people think in terms of man mission. You can just have a free flow brainstorming, generate ideas. Uh, reasons why a paper boat is not floating long enough in water. But when you come back and try to do an affinity clustering, you can use the 6M method to do the affinity clustering. And once you complete this, each of these uh, clustered root causes can be further taken into the fishbone like this. And from there, you will be in a better position to uh, analyze and identify which of these are vital causes and which of these are trivial causes. So a fishbone diagram is a mandatory tool to be used in any continuous improvement project, irrespective of framework. Especially the analyze phase of a DMAC project starts with a fishbone like this. And then you collect data, validate these, you know, uh, excess, which we call it as process parameters or input parameters. At the end of analyze phase, you will be able to circle some of these root causes and call them as vital 
root causes for this particular problem. So the analyze phase starts with a fishbone diagram and it also ends with a fishbone diagram. In the beginning, it will only have uh, the possible root causes. But when you complete the analyze phase, you will be able to validate these root causes and identify which of these are trivial, which can be dropped and which of these are vital so that you will be able to focus on this during your improve phase. I hope this video was useful for you to understand what is a fishbone diagram. So we will upload more videos on 7QC tools. In our upcoming videos, you will find videos about uh, process flow diagram, stratification analysis, histogram. So these are other videos that we are planning to upload in this series of 7QC tools. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much for listening to this video. Looking forward to upload more videos on uh, quality management topics. Thank you.